Now, I've been doing a bunch of watching of videos and looking at help documents for Surf and Rhino and NX, Creo, Katia, just seeing how they deal with <clears throat> high quality surfaces and curves, as always. And it's really interesting now to see how we shape up. Um, there's some stuff that we've gone in in 191 and all the stuff we've been doing over the last couple of years. And this is really going to be a really simple example, but it highlights a lot of good stuff. So we've got a couple of simple sketches, right? These are Bezier sketches and degree two, right? So it's a conic and, you know, just some arbitrary. The same thing with this other one on the top plane. Conic, Bezier sketch. Now, if I do a projection of this, if I just do it with the defaults, um, you know, and I've colored these after the fact, so just to highlight, this is the projected sketch. These are the two primary sketches. Uh, if we look at an evaluation of that, you see how there's a lot of knots along there. This is a very complicated, for what it looks like, it's a very complicated, mathematically complicated curve. And so things like this just don't lend themselves well for downstream activities like sweeping, lofting, boundaries, and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, so that's what you get when you just accept the defaults. And for some people, that might be sufficient, right? Um, if you then mirror this curve, there it is. So we got another curve there. And we might do something like create a couple of fit splines between the endpoints, right? I've left them black. And I'm going to suppress those two. I'm going to make a boundary surface between there. If we have a look at this boundary surface, um, these are lots of segments in here, lots of control points. And if we look at an evaluation of it, you'll see that indeed these magenta lines are the knot lines or the segments, all right? So it's very, very busy. And this is only because it influenced by the um, the curve, the boundary curve that we gave it. So that's, that's what it's going to do. Um, you can see here up the top there is there's 10 spans in the U direction. And there's one span in V, but that's obviously simple. Um, right. So that's a problem. Now, the, I'll do the, the last bit first was the thing that I suppressed. And... A really cool thing with the edit curve feature, you know, of course, the edit curve here, is that you can insert the edit curve before it, the curves were going to be used. Like these two edit, these two, um, just three D fit splines that I put in. I'm going to edit or unsuppress them now because what I did do is go in and say, let's up the degree. Uh, so it would add an extra control point in the middle, and then edit that control point, you know, somehow just pull it up and down. I'm trying to give this surface some crown. Um, that's, what, that's what I'm trying to do here. And it, it's really, really simple to do now. And so I did that for both the curves and the boundary surface. You see, it's the same boundary surface feature we did before, but it's, it's reacted nicely. Uh, and if we have a look at things like the... Um, uh, zebra stripes or whatever and it's a really really clean surface sort of but it's still it's it's very clean but it's very busy right so if we have a look at um sorry, mathematically busy uh this gives you the busyness view right? and you can see how the the crowning has affected the control points unfortunately we can't manipulate these control points directly that would be my next dream um but we can kind of achieve it through you know, controlling these boundaries here, yeah, like this. In Ice and Surf and Alias and stuff, you would be able to choose these rows um, independently or separately or with symmetry turned on and, and manipulate these control points either individually or as rows and, and achieve this crowning effect very to a very, very fine degree. And what I've done is provide the V curves, give them curvature, and then just kind of eyeball it to see what, you know, what it looks like uh, in the end. So this is like a bonnet from a car or something like that. The other thing, though, is we can go all the way back to this projected curve feature. And I will uh, take you back to here, this one here. And if I had used the approximation option, 
I could set a target degree and the number of control points, max number of control points that I want along here. And in this case, I've gone to the, the good extreme, which is a single span, which is you know four control points on a degree three. So it's a single span curve here now. Uh, and you can show the deviation, and it's a pretty small deviation, uh, but because you know this is an early curve that's going to be used for a slab or, or, or panel surface um, that's at the top of the tree, and it's going to be kind of my primary driving surface. So I don't mind that it's a 0.226 millimeter deviation. Um, you know that's the price to pay, and not a very big one um, for an extremely smooth. Um, you can see here I've only got the one, two, three, four control points. You can see that there. Um, and, uh, you know, if we look at the curvature, it's, you know, can't get much smoother than that. Anyway, so I've just enabled this approximation option. And then as we roll to the end, you know, it doesn't really look like much difference at this point. I'll turn everything off. Um, you know, we've still got very clean reflections here but the the beauty of this is when you have a look at the control point grid now there are no knots it's actually a single span bezier patch right um, and their control points are perfectly distributed um, and that is really really powerful stuff you know with the exception of not being able to move the control points or the, the, the grids explicitly uh we've achieved something which uh, you know that the level of this sort of surfacing is is very very high just thought you should uh see it and appreciate all the hard work that's gone into this